you can create happiness and you can create your own path in tech that is not defined yet. I didn't leave Google with a plan really. It was more just like, I'm just gonna try something. I didn't think much about what the next few years were gonna look like. It's just like, I have enough money to last me a few years, so let's just try a bunch of things. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be flying all the way out to Los Angeles to meet with Bria, who quit her job to build a game studio and has since launched three successful mobile game apps. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you wanna see more videos in this series, please make sure to smash that like button, tap that subscribe button, and leave a nice comment to show this video some love because these videos are very time intensive and any support you can show really helps. I hope you enjoy the video. Hi, my name is Bria Sullivan and I am the founder of Honey Bee Games. I had no idea what computer science was. I didn't know what engineering was, but I had to apply to school when the recession hit. So in like 2008, 2009, and I just didn't want to end up like a lot of my friends' parents without any money and losing their homes. So I knew that I was really into math and science. I was like, I loved calculus, I loved physics, but I didn't really know what to do with that. So I ended up just Googling the top paid careers out of college and I found this article and they were all different types of engineering and I was like, what's an engineer? The first one was like nuclear engineering and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm interested in that. And the next one was like computer engineering, computer science. So I chose it kind of at random. Joining college was really interesting because a lot of the people in the major already had some type of programming experience. I started with zero experience and so I felt very out of place and I also wasn't into a lot of the things my classmates were into and also my school was majority white, like 90%. There was only about like two black people in the whole major at the time that I joined. So it was very isolating, but that otherness made me turn to, okay, I'm gonna prove all these people wrong who don't think I'm smart, who don't think I can do it. So I ended up teaching myself Android development during winter break during my first year of college. And then after teaching myself Android development and kind of getting my hands wet and doing a little bit, I did okay in my classes. My grades were kind of made up for by all of the apps that I was making in college. That ended up landing me my first internship at Microsoft. Because of all of the like building that I was doing outside of my classes in college, I didn't think that I was gonna end up at a big company. I was mostly just trying to get what I could out of these internships and then go join a startup, start my own company. But unfortunately, in the last year of my college experience, my senior year, right in the fall, that's like when everyone is applying to their full-time jobs. My cousin, who was my best friend, we grew up together, we did everything together, we planned our futures together. She ended up getting diagnosed with stage four cancer. She got it around Thanksgiving, and at the time, I only had one offer, and it was from Microsoft. And even though I really wanted to keep interviewing, I just couldn't do it. And she ended up passing away three months later, and I was just kind of like broken, I was lost. And I know it's very privileged, I did have this thing to fall back on, but I did have this uh, offer at Microsoft and that's why I ended up choosing it. It was the easiest option for me at the time. I was living in Redmond at the time and I was just not in a good space. And again, this is right after Nia, my cousin had passed away. I was away from family. I was barely seeing anyone and I was like not in a good place like in my personal life. So I decided to apply to Google in Southern California. I worked in Google Ads on an internal tool. The funny part is I was hired as a mobile engineer, but I did not do any mobile code while I was at Google. I did mostly like backend work. I did a lot of front end web, a lot of like large scale app design, but no mobile code at all. When I was at Google, I did a lot of work outside of my day job, like a lot of diversity and equity programs, uh, volunteering for that. And I think the most meaningful thing that I did was my 20% time project. It was with a small team of just volunteers and we made a 3D installation for the Smithsonian, the African American Museum. At first I started with prototyping and building the back end, but I found more fulfillment doing the front end. So the installation, 
Canon has kind of like a big three by three grid to look almost like holograms. And then there's also a kiosk panel that you control the 3D scanned objects with. So I did both of those things. So anything user facing, I worked on and that's in the final product that's there today. It's supposed to be permanent. So if you go to the museum, it should be there. There's a whole floor of interactive, cool stuff to do. It's like not only the things that we made, but everything that was made for that floor makes you feel like you're learning about our history in a different way, but a way that sticks. At the end of 2019, my mom suddenly had a stroke and lost her ability to walk and speak for a while. And I needed to step up and help take care of my family. I took a couple months off to like be with my mom and take care of her. And during that time, I had a lot of time to reflect and realize that I have this thing that a lot of people don't have. And I'm super blessed to have such a loving and close family. And I hadn't nurtured that. Ever since my cousin died, I kind of like checked out and I tried to find meaning in the world. I started to get the feeling of uh, wanting to leave Google in the beginning of 2020, but like right before the pandemic, I already had the idea in my mind that I need to be in California. Like I need to go back home. I started interviewing even internally at Google, but there wasn't any role that was speaking to me. And I was spending the majority of my time just doing stuff that didn't feel meaningful to me and it didn't feel fulfilling. I started to at least like work on and teach myself game development in the beginning of 20. 2020, but I knew that I wanted to leave and do it full time about the middle of 2020. When I got this idea of, okay, I'm gonna do games full time, it was definitely like a little impulsive. I was like, I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna do it about boba. And it doesn't really make a lot of sense, but to me it made sense because there's a community around it where like, you, this is something you go do with your friends. It's a boost of serotonin. Like everyone that likes boba at least, they feel joy when they get it. So my first game was a very simple game where you catch ingredients that are falling from the top of the screen and you catch it in a cup and you have to like fulfill an order. I kind of got the idea a little bit from a game I used to play when I was a kid. It was like a Lilo and Stitch sandwich stacking game. I used to play that game so much, like both Nia and I would spend hours playing that game together. So that same like fun feeling, I'm like, okay, let me, let's do that, but with Boba. So that was my first game. It's probably the simplest out of all of them, but it like sparked the feeling in me where I'm like, okay, I wanna keep doing this. When making the first game, I honestly just tweeted about it and sent it to friends, posted it on my social media, but I did not do any type of user acquisition or ads. It was honestly just like a, hey, I'm putting this out there. There's no ads on it, just play it. I didn't even have analytics in it. I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just releasing something. The next game that I made was an idle game. It's like a game that you can play, click a bunch of stuff, put it away. When you open the app back up hours later or days later, you earn money. So I made a game like that. It was called Boba Barista Idle. That game, I had a lot more direction. I tried to replicate other games in the same category and I was able to learn from it. I added analytics to it. I added reward ads to it. So now I'm getting into monetization. Now I'm getting into making insights and what free to play actually was. So with the Idol Boba game, the one that I launched in February of 2021, I learned a lot from that launch. I learned a lot about how to make insights off of the analytics. I learned that like one of the most important things is retention. I learned about like making features based on analytics. And I also learned that I wasn't being strategic enough with who my audience was. Owning a game studio or trying to like run a game studio is not easy. Uh, you have to wear a lot of hats, especially as the only engineer on it. I have to be the CTO, I have to be the CEO, I have to be marketing. You have to do biz dev um, if that exists. I had to learn all of that as I'm doing it. My third launched game is called Boba Story, and it's a lot more me. I tried to attack this with a lot more of my like knowledge from the idol game, and then also just like uh, the knowledge that I built off of getting to know my audience and getting to know my users. There's this one game I played called Animal Restaurant, and I played it for at least three months every single day. There's an achievement in that game that's like how many ads you've watched, because they also use reward ads, and I got the achievement of 1,200 ads 
ads watched for that game. And so I'm like, well, this is the same audience that this game is uh, is going after. That's kind of like the same audience I want to go after. And so I also learned that like what really like propels a game forward is, ha is having a good story behind it. And with this one, it's just like, there's a strawberry forest spirit and he made strawberry cream puffs and he wanted to be really famous in his realm. But unfortunately he lost his fame because the fox down the way introduced everyone to cronuts. So his thing is he wants to like regain former glory and your job is to help him restore his own glory and restore his old shop. And so the game starts off with you making strawberry milk tea with boba and him like showing up in your house being like, hey, what's that? And so he's got a magic strawberry and he's like, oh my God, what's boba? He's like, can you introduce this to all the people in my world? And so a strawberry lights up, you go through the portal with him and then now you're in his shop and it's your shop to, to decorate and to introduce all the cute characters to boba. You can choose your ingredients, you can choose your menu and you can decorate based on your aesthetic. I built a game studio knowing that there's a chance that I will not make any money doing this. And I'm doing it out of the pure joy of making games and giving people the joy of playing a game about Boba. As of right now, each game costs me from artwork to music and everything, it costs me about two to $3,000 per game. So both of the games that have cost me money have paid for themselves already. I am not making enough to live off of yet, but I'm hoping being by next year, once I have a couple games compounding, I should have enough money to live off of. It's passive income. So as long as like there's some type of user acquisition happening that I don't have to do, then it's passive income coming in that I don't have to actively like try to close deals or anything like that. So that's nice. My long-term goals for Honeybee Games is to be able to create a company that has a small team of well-paid people that we can just live off the games and just like create nice things for the world and make people happy. And I also just want to be an example for other people that like you can take the resources, like I earned a good amount of money when I was at Google, I saved enough money and like you can put it into something that you're really passionate about. You can create happiness and you can create your own path in tech that is not defined yet or not defined for what you thought because I thought I was going to either be at Google or big company or startup working on some finance or is some SaaS tool, but never did I think that I was going to end up making a game studio. And I want to be an example for people to see that like, it doesn't have to be these like billion dollar ideas or these IPO companies. You can find your niche and you can make good money and find happiness in your niche.